Um, and thank you, uh, Liran and Ada, for inviting me here today. Um, well, the first thing I was thinking about when I was looking at your very impressive video just now was, how come we don't get a band <laughs> for a Rethink Cyber in Singapore? I think that would be very helpful. Um, when, when, we, when I was asked to rethink cyber and really rethink the way we do things, um, I thought that was an excellent theme in terms of how we we're going to approach um, dealing with security in a smart nation. So I started to rethink a couple of uh, interesting historical events that have nothing to do with smart nation. This is the story of the Titanic. Now, most of you know the story of the Titanic, uh, but contrary to your popular belief, iceberg warnings were not ignored by the captain of the Titanic. The Titanic had iceberg positions charted out in its command room. The Titanic had a lookout post present to spot any incoming icebergs that might have been missed. The Titanic crew was looking for icebergs. The crew, what the crew had overlooked was that the Titanic was a very large ship that required a lot longer to steer away than smaller ships that they had catered for. So the approximate amount of time they had catered to steer away from an iceberg was very different from what they had expected. In many senses, that's very similar to what we're facing today in Smart Nation. Smart Nation, as an overall initiative across the whole of government and across the whole of nation, is a much larger vessel that we're called to steer. And these icebergs are everywhere, and even if we're looking at them, it doesn't mean that we are going to, um, we are going to be able to ignore them. And many of those icebergs come in the form of cybersecurity threats. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Smart Nation concept, um, here are some uh, objectives. You can read uh, some transformational applications in the areas of urban mobility. That's transport for some of you. Uh, homes and environment, um, a government ops and service delivery, health and aging, competitive economy. Riding on key national digital platforms, things that we're discussing, like the national digital identity the national e-payments platform, the national trade platform, the national sensor platform, and so on, uh, that work together to form um, a layer of smartness for this country in order to get better living, better opportunities, and stronger communities. What does Smart Nation actually mean, though, um, for uh, many of us who are building it? Um, we're looking at something close to 1.8 million current and planned census in the next two to three years, just across government agencies alone, in all of these different domains, from education to mobility to lifestyle, safety and security. These sensors, um, and some have said it's even going to be more than that, bring numerous points of vulnerability. We have to ask ourselves, how do we trust the integrity of all these sensors? Um, how we deal with the fact that sensors are out there in the field with no walls to exist to protect them, like data centers? And defense in depth starts from authentication, authorization, and policies. And then there's further um, enhanced by analytics. Here we look at some possible solutions. I'm not saying that these are definitely what we're going to be doing, but since you asked me to rethink, this is what we're rethinking about. Um, authentication. Uh, it, dealing with sensors um, also means dealing with the possibilities of uh, looking at silicon roots of trust within the chip uh, at the sensor level. Things like physical unclonable features that provide identity assurance of all the devices that are in the field. We also look at uh, authorization and authentication in terms of the size of certificates uh, for PKI and how we could possibly resize certificates to customize um, PKI for constrained devices. And in the cases where we can't, we're looking at things like power efficient rekeying to pr pr protect our secrets. We're also looking at blockchain and distributed ledgers to ma manage our IoT devices and make sure that there are no zombie devices on the network. Analytics is another thing that we're also deploying to, provide, to perform crowdsourcing to detect zombie sensors. To enable sharing of data, because this is, is all about data between parties, what smart cities need to do is to protect the privacy of contributors. This is done through a lot of our work in secure multi-party and trusted third-party computing. We're asking ourselves questions like how we can process our information safely uh, in other people's hands. How do we use things like homomorphic encryption in a cost-effective and faster manner to unlock the computational leverage of cloud computing? Finally, after all the data is enriched, how do we share this with the public? How do we manage re-identification risks uh, through anonymization and differential privacy? A lot of these are the questions we're facing now with all the sensor data, with the structured data, unstructured data, in a smart nation. So with the relentless increase in scale and severity of cyber attacks these days, 
um, we are facing what we consider to be the impending strangle of manpower insufficiency in cyber. As more devices come online as we speak, the democratization of cyber tools have expanded the pool of potential adversaries. What can we do in the case of overwhelming odds? How do we prevent cyber from overwhelming us as defenders? Well, with recent advances in artificial intelligence and deep learning, GovTech is not shy of investing in game-changing technologies um, in this space as well, something we call autonomous cybersecurity. Um, with the support of our research and security communities, and I hope a lot of you belong in that category, we would like to come together to challenge ourselves to push the boundaries of what intelligent agents can do and to really create more autonomous forms of cybersecurity um, to detect vulnerabilities and patch them in real time with very minimal human intervention. This is not going to be ready this year, it's not going to be ready next year, but we think that in the end this will be the future uh, of protection of networks that deal with both um, IoT devices as well as traditional enterprise IT. In conclusion, I'd just like to uh, leave you with this quote from JFK. There are risks and costs of the program of action, but far less than the long-range costs of comfortable inaction. Thank you very much.